Welcome to another episode of G's Place, and I'm your host Gladys Toscano, and today's guest is David Whitman, and he is the owner of this wonderful Velomobile. I ran into David outside the Oak Bluffs post office, and I saw this vehicle thing. I thought it was the coolest thing, so I started asking him questions about it, and asked if he might want to do an interview for my show, and he agreed. So I thank you for joining me, David. My pleasure. My pleasure. So tell us, um, tell us all about the Velomobile. Velomobile is a vehicle, it's a French word meaning bicycle car. It was cool. invented by a Frenchman just after World War I, and they look like antique cars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a human-powered vehicle. It's, uh, there's no motor in this thing. It's, uh, been this is a modern version that's been designed in a wind tunnel to allow you to go down the road much faster than with a conventional bicycle. To ride a conventional bicycle, even a high-end conventional bicycle, is like riding with a parachute behind mm -hmm. you uh, mm -hmm. compared to this thing. Mm -hmm. um, it has headlights, taillights, brake lights, turn signals, horn. It has suspension all the way around. Wow! I do all my grocery shopping with it. It has plenty of floor space. Uh, November 20th will make um, four years that I've had it. Oh, excellent. And I'm approaching 27,000 miles so far. Oh, that's amazing. And it's, all it's, by your legs. All by my legs. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a question. Yes. Is this your main means of transportation on the vineyard? Yes. Oh, yes, cool. it is. I cool. uh, gave up my, my car, needed an engine rebuild about two and a half years ago. I didn't want to put the money into it. I couldn't rationalize putting the money into it. Mm -hmm. And I finally sold it a couple weeks ago. I $800 for it. You know, so it's, uh, oh, that's better than nothing. That's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah. And money in is better than money out. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and, um, but what not buying gasoline on Martha's Vineyard is almost as good as winning the lottery. That's a blessing. It is. And I, I can get anywhere. You know, I can, uh, I, uh, earlier today I came down Barnes Road. I hit 43 miles an hour. Wow. You know, so it's, it's. I was just going to ask you, how fast does it go? It can go as fast. It depends on the hills. And, uh. I've, uh, yesterday I came from Egertown on the, uh, on the beach road and I was running between 30 to 35. Wow, know? amazing. And amazing. it's, it's a, it, it's all the aerodynamics. It just float, the air flows around you smoothly instead mm -hmm. of, you know, riding a bicycle like this or like this. It's like right. a brick wall. So tell me, David, where do you park this on the vineyard? I... I'll park it in Post Office Square, that mm -hmm. spot that you saw it. I'll yes. park uh, I'll, I'll, at the um, Stop and Shop. I'll park it in the parking space. Oh, cool. Um, at Kronig's, uh, they have a bike rack. With, uh, if the bike rack is completely full of uh, shopping carts, <laughs> I'll park it in a parking space. And, uh, oh, cool. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm worried about cars pulling in and crunching it, but I mm -hmm. leave the flasher going. I leave the tail light on. Right. It's, uh, and you know it's um so look out for david if you yes. see him out there okay you because you think they might hit it because it's low and they may not see it well into that I, spot? I think people drive very erratically and uh, very fast at times now yeah. he said that i said that okay. <laughs> he said that <laughs> all right currently how many velomobiles are there on the vineyard there's four on the vineyard oh, cool. uh, since i i got this one uh, one fellow followed me home one night Eventually got one uh, from oh, well. Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, a young man, uh, uh, Trey Arujo, got one, and I was uh, mentoring him when he was in the charter school for a mm -hmm. couple of years. And uh, you know, he uh, has a beautiful. It's called a Mango. It's a different body design. Oh, okay, and, uh, cool. And then there's another fellow who uh, actually competes, uh, and he was uh, in what are called brevets, and they're uh, certain length rides. That they have so much time to finish. It's not. It's a. It's a race against the clock. Oh. And uh, and he recently did one uh, a couple years ago, I guess, um, from Paris, France to Brest, France and back, 1,200 kilometers. And he had 90 hours to finish that. And he said the people in the velomobiles were just going, shoo, going right by him. And he got himself one. It looks the same body shape, but it's white. And, wow. And, and his is carbon fiber, whereas this is fiberglass which makes it lighter. Yes, I saw the way you picked it up and moved it. If you notice, we changed the direction we were standing in. Well, let me ask you a question. You mentioned Belgium, so is that where this came from? No, this was, uh, this was designed in Holland. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the company that had been importing them into North America is Blue Velo in Toronto. When I first approached them in 2000, summer of 2008, uh, um, they told me that if I were to order one from Holland through them, it would be 2014 before I'd see it because there was such a backlog. Wow. And then, he, then I, would, I would gulp and then I would, uh, he said, but, but as of January 2009, would have the agreement to start manu you know, building these in North America. He's limited to Canada and the United States. So at that time, I got on his list and I, s I wired him uh, money uh, in December of 2008. It arrived uh, November 20th, 2009. That's not bad. Uh, it was 11 months. This is number nine. This is the ninth one. Uh, uh, it's called a Quest. This model is a Quest. The company's name is Blue Velo, so its serial number is QB009. And cool. I just spoke with a fellow who has QB080, so he's they're he's coming really, out. He's really building them. And these these are um, basically hand built. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of uh, labor intensive, you know, uh, put put into this. And, I uh, think it's cool. It looks like a um, a bullet. It well, it's it's been referred to as bullet bikes. Yeah, it and, looks like uh, a the um, was it uh, Popular Science did an article on uh, it was called Power from the People about oh. human powered, and mm -hmm. this was September of 2009. You can see it online. You know, you can Google it and find it. They had a whole section on these, and they did call them bullet bites. Yeah, because it's a, it looks like a cool bullet, and it's it's just you use a lot less energy. To go faster than someone in a road bike, mm -hmm. and it's um, uh, two weeks ago uh, the Cycle Martha's Vineyard. I was wondering what that number started. It fin started and finished at the PA Club. Mm -hmm. uh, went around uh, um, East Chop, down, uh, come back around all the way down County, uh, the Vineyard Haven Road, up the State Road, State Road, boom, 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 all the way up to uh, the cliffs. And within a half a mile, I dropped everybody. Cool. And I was caught by six to eight cyclists at the circle, at the mm -hmm. cliffs, 29 miles down the road. There was a big crowd of people because they were having the road rally, road race to save the, uh, raise money for the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And the cops were telling me to slow down, and these guys went right by me. And I got on motion to trail, and I blasted by them 40 miles an hour. Excellent. Hit 40 miles Excellent. <laughs> I like it. And it's uh and no gas. And no gas. No That's gas. Cool. And it's uh and I, I have floor space, I carry food. Mm -hmm. I carry the um, I camel back with the hose so I can just drink Think. as I'm going. Yeah, just like uh, a car. It's uh my longest one day ride was uh I caught the ferry, the six o'clock ferry and went and rode a hundred and forty two mile loop mm -hmm. and back to Woods Hole. In eight and a half hours riding time. Oh my goodness, David! You know? I can't imagine. And that. it was this, uh, but it's 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 like a barca lounger. It's very comfortable. It's I would very think so. Comfortable. It's like I say, there's suspension. Um, within the first six months of having this, mm -hmm. I was stopped by island police six times, twice in Vineyard Haven, and uh, the first time in Vineyard in Oak Bluffs, twice in Vineyard Haven. Uh, once in uh, West Tisbury, uh, Chilmark, Egertown, but you know, they just wave on the go by. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you find it actually comfortable? Oh, it's very comfortable. Yeah, because I'm riding a bike for, what you say, eight hours? I don't think that would be too well, much. And, and I have, uh, I am, I'm uh, old, I was diagnosed with a degenerative joint disorder. Mm -hmm. I have arthritis everywhere. <laughs> I have uh, uh, bulge discs and discs that are disintegrating, a slip disc in the neck. This supports my body. You know, I was finding right. that the conventional bicycles were beating me up. Yes. They really were beating me up. And I mean, when I was 34, they wanted to cut my knees completely off and put new ones in. Complete knee replacement. And this helped you? No, I actually, what helped me was I got a mountain bike. Mm -hmm. And I. My first ride, I got the mountain bike, I went and rode, and for three days, I was about icy in my knees. And 
and then I, once the pain subsided, I went out and did it again. And then I went out and did it again. And uh, I was doing physical therapy at Spalding Rehab in Boston three days a week for six months, meaning I caught the boat, I caught the bus Whoa. with the physical therapy. And they were the docs who were saying they wanted to replace my knees, but the physical therapist said, you've got to think of your knees as two pencils held end to end. You've got to make them strong. I still got the original knees. They, you know, you don't want to walk up and down the stairs with me because they make a lot of noise. But, but uh, <laughs> this, riding a bicycle is very low impact on, mm -hmm. on, your, on your knees. That's and, interesting you said that because those porch steps right there, yeah. I tripped up last summer, got a meniscus sprain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. It, it stopped me from walking. I was a power walker, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, light runner, yes. but I loved it, and yeah. I can't do any of it now. Hence the the weight gain yeah. and the pain. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. knee, boy, you can hear it holler sometimes. Yeah, it yeah. hurts so much. And it, it's. Uh, so you recommend riding a bike? I recommend riding a bike. You know, with a uh, uh, with, and before I got the bike, I was walking with a cane, and I was going downstairs on my bike. You know, one step at a time. Yeah, those because steps hurt. Well, because my, my legs were at the point where I, they would collapse if I was they going downstairs. They couldn't hold your weight yeah. going down the and, uh, and in fact, I started a the mountain bike club that's been off, here on the island. It's mm -hmm. been going for 25 years, the Vineyard Off-Road Bicycle Association. It's still going with, even without me. Cool. <laughs> that and, is uh, so cool. And But um, the mountain biking, I love the mountain biking, but it was hurting. It was, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have a great ride on Sunday, and I'd be hurting. So when? Exactly. So, uh, I know it. I know the thing. And then, uh, I was thinking about getting a recumbent bike, mm -hmm. and then, then I was talking about getting a, uh, uh, like a little fairing in the front to, mm -hmm. to keep the cold air off of me. And then somebody sent me a video of one of these. And that did it. And it was about five years later that I figured out how, you know, it's like, how am I going to pay for this thing? Because it's not cheap. And, uh, oh, I'm and uh, so, um, yeah, that's how it happened. I, uh, and it led me to this. But I, you may have seen I have a bicycle built for three. No, I haven't seen oh, that. Yeah. That's cool. It's, uh, uh, in fact, there's a postcard on the racks of my daughters and I back, taken back in 2007. Mm -hmm. They're now 20 and 18. Wow. And, uh, and it's 10 and a half foot long green. Uh, has you know three seats, three handlebars, three. Princess. I'd like to get a shot of that. And That's it's, cool. It's, I've never heard of a three-person bicycle. Uh, it's uh, they're called a triplet. A and triplet. My daughters picked out the, the my daughter Gaia, my oldest daughter picked out the color, and we started a contest online. What do you call a ten and a half foot long big green bicycle built for three? And we put this on on the internet. We had some all over the planet. Incredible call. Uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, Beanie or uh, Beanie and Cecil or whatever, you know, all this stuff. Cerberus, you know, three-headed. Mm -hmm. uh, fellow down in Georgia sent a one-word suggestion. Booger with three O's. <laughs> and my daughter said, yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute. That's a cute story. So it's okay. that's the big green booger. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute. That's adorable. So, David, tell me, are you an islander? Were you born and raised here, or are you a wash ashore like me? Oh, I'm definitely a wash ashore. I, uh, uh, this past spring made 30 years I've been here. Uh, well, 30 years ago this past spring, I came up here, a friend of mine in D.C. who had lived here, mm -hmm. you know, I was born in D.C., he dragged me, I uh, said, oh, we got to go up there, because I was just like, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and so we drove up here, we were here for four days, my jaw was hurting from smiling so much, and uh, <laughs> it, it was crazy. And then, uh, then we drove back, and my first day driving to work on the Capitol Beltway, and I was just like, this is not how human beings should live. And I turned in my two-week notice that morning. Wow. And, uh, it's like, they, uh, you know, my family was down, down there, my brother's still down there, my mother was down there, and they, my mother was just a Peter Pan, you're never going to grow up. <laughs> and I've been here for 30 years. Um, have a home, have two children who were born in Oak Bluffs. And, cool. Uh, so cool. I love your story. And it's, it's, uh, once you, it's, someone said to me once, you come here, you either love it or you hate it. I love it. Yeah, I, 
and I, I, I know, I mean, I wasn't as drastic as you, but I came here and I fell in love and I came back again and again yeah, and yeah. again. And I spent a November here and part of the, no, yeah, November and part of December. And then I just said, that's it. I, I have to, and I went home and did what I had to do and yeah. moved up here. Oh, it's, it's you, you, you know, you, you want to be here. And yeah. so I would go back to Brooklyn and miss here. Yeah, oh yeah. That that's how drastic it was, and I was just like, okay, it's I I should be here, so I'm here. Yes, okay. I would go to D.C. and I'd get lost. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. It's, but, oh, you know what I need to yes. ask you too. This is important. Do you need a special driver's license no, or permit not. for this? It's technically this is a bicycle. Cool. And, uh, the uh, Massachusetts defines a bicycle as one the three wheels pedal powered. This is it. There you three go. Three wheels, pedal see, powered. You could have one. And the police, uh, that they, you know, you can't see me pedaling, so it looks like I'm, I'm cruising. You know, right, I'm, I'm right. flying down the road, and that's why they stopped me. The um, one of the most, they've they've all been very positive stops here on the island. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the the best ones was I was on Pease Point Way going down to Katama. A police uh, officer, Egertown cruiser, came out of the police station, going towards Egertown through the four-way stop, and as I'm approaching it, he came through, he stopped, his lights came on, I stopped like this, and his window comes down, and he goes, well, <laughs> I said, oh, just going for a bike ride, officer. Said, That's a bicycle? I said, yes, yes it is. And he went, excellent! <laughs> <laughs> and <it was> just like <laughs> That's a great response. And it was very positive. But you know, to, honestly, it, it, I said it looked like a bullet, but it kind of does look like a sports car. It does look like a sports yeah. car. Yeah. And I, uh, when my first time pulled over was by Oak Bluffs, and he said half the, um, the force thought it was motorized, half said it was pedal powered. Two weeks before I was stopped, I had a uh, Oak Bluffs cruiser behind me on, Oak, on um, Barnes Road at 40 miles an hour, and he didn't stop me. You know, mm -hmm. he just rode into town with me. And um, it's uh, it's an you know it's an amazing vehicle. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's you know I mean I'll I'll want to go shopping at um, at Reliable, and I have some extra time. I will go to Egertown, down to Katama. Th uh, I mean I'll go to West Tisbury, down to Katama, Egertown before I get to Oak Plus. It's 30 miles. Wow. <laughs> so it's uh. And it's, uh, it really is enjoyable. It's, I think uh, it's amazing. You look healthy. It, it, it's gorgeous. I think it's absolutely adorable. It's like if it was mine, I would call it the bullet bee. Well, I call it kind of looks like me and a bullet bee. Yes. Well, I call it Aeolus, who was the Greek king of the rings. Cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and, uh, so you know what? Is it, will you show me inside of it yes, a little I bit? Will. Let me still yeah. show the viewers. Hold on one okay. second. We'll be right back. One. Okay, David, show us what this thing looks like inside. Okay. This, um, this is a, uh, a roof uh, that's... Well, the Blue Velo, the company who built this, because I had so many miles, my first year gave me $500 worth of shop credit. Cool. My second year, they gave me $1,500 worth of shop credit. This roof is about 1,300 euros. I'm not quite sure what that is in dollars, but that... Those, that funds uh, paid for this, and this actually increases my speed. You know, just having this, this, uh, and it's uh, much, much better protection during the uh, winter. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it keeps me warm. Um, so you even ride this in the winter, David? I, I ride it year round. Oh my goodness! I, I, I um, posted uh, two pictures on uh, Facebook recently. One, you know, the uh, the back entrance into Reliable Market. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Kennebec, well, there's a bike rack right there at the door. I always back this right into the bike rack. I have put two pictures. One picture was from last winter. It was eight degrees, mm. and there was a shopping cart full of groceries that all went in here. And the other was uh, later uh, earlier this summer when it was closer to 90. <laughs> but you can see inside, uh, this is the seat, and this is the padding for the seat. This right here is the, the, the steering. This is the handlebar itself. This is the, uh, the gears. This is the brake lever. This is the horn. This is the turn signal. There's an electric si switch here that when I press this uh, lever, it actuates the, uh, the okay, brake. Okay, let's switch. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's 
this way I can get a really good shot. So I want to show the people how you move in this thing. And th like I say, this is the steering. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the shift, gear shift, 27 gears. Um, the brake, brake lever with an electric uh, switch on here that actuates a brake light. A turn also, signal. it has lights on it too. Oh, it has lights. It has turn signals. It has. Do I let me? Ooh, let me power up. Sorry about that. I uh, turn off the power when it's sitting sometimes. And you see, there's an interior light. That's my computer on board. Oh, cool. And uh, it has uh, turn signals. You can hear it. Very nice. I love your sign. One less car. One less car. <laughs> And um, and as you can see, it's uh, suspension all, all the way around, so it's much very cushy ride. I added these lights. These are very powerful lights. I added these lights uh, because the light in the nose was not sufficient. I didn't feel it was sufficient enough. So the light in the nose would be like a headlight. Yes. Cool. And, um, okay, I get it. And uh, and it has like a low beam, which are two LEDs, and it has a nose light that is. Uh, I'm gonna switch around and go look at that. And, and keep an eye on it, and I'll show you how that nose light actually works. Oh yeah, it comes out. It comes out. Cool. And then it uh, comes back up to be more aerodynamic. And, wow. Um, oh, the wind is picking up. And I added this light back here. Each, each of these lights has a small battery pack, a very small battery pack, about so big. And this one is set with a flasher. So this is like over 700 lumens of flashing light. Wow. And uh, very bright. This has a running light. It has a brake light. These are the turn signals. Maybe you, you want me to hit the signals? Yeah. OK. On the shaded side, you'll probably see it better. Oh, yes. You know, it's not a whole lot, but it... Uh, no, but it's enough. It, it's enough. It works. And uh, and the bright yellow, I really wanted red, but I figured the bright yellow would be yeah. much more <laughs> visible. It would be safer. Yeah. Because uh, you can see this thing a half a mile away without the lights. Oh, yes, you because can. Because of the yellow. And um, it's uh, it's got to be the nicest thing I've ever done for myself. Well, I think it's amazing. How about you show us you riding it so okay. I can get a shot of it, okay? okay? okay. And I want to see how you get in it. Too. Okay. This is my uh, my Camelback. Uh, I keep it full of fluid. Uh, I, I have my wallet and ID and everything. And it goes right in here against the fender well. And if I need to drink, I drink while I'm riding. I just have the hose right here. I take it and drink. That is so sweet. It's, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's an amazing machine. Okay, I'll, um, I'm going to rotate it and point it up the hill. Or mm -hmm. Look at how you just pick it up. It's, it's not very heavy. Well, it's 79 pounds empty, but this has, um, and, but this is fiberglass. The carbon fiber versions are closer to, you know, 61 pounds, something mm -hmm. like that. And to get it, you got to, um, with this thing, you do have a floor in here. You got a lot of floor space. But if I were to put my weight fully down on here, I'd put, I'd probably, I could seriously crack the floor. You know, wow. the floor is, it's, it's right there. Right, so you don't step on it. That's what I you're saying. I don't step on that. What I do is I reach in here and step on this. This is very reinforced. The steering linkage is inside there. Oh, I see. There's I a, get you know, it. it's completely enclosed top and bottom uh, for this, like I say, the steering linkage. Uh, but it's, um, it, and it takes, you have to learn it. This is part of learning how to ride one of these things, getting mm -hmm. in. I slip a leg over and I go like that. And then I bring my other foot over and I just slip it right on like a shoe. Cool. <laughs> and, and I have uh, pedals and you can hear me click, click into the pedals. And that way you don't have to worry about your foot slipping off. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it has those things that hold you? Yeah, oh, and, okay. uh, it, and it, you know, you would take a lot more energy to hold your feet on the pedals, pedaling out like that. Mm -hmm. In this way, with the, uh, with the clips, your feet aren't going to come out. Right. And this guy comes over. Now, do you ever ride it without that hood? I, I do, but uh, I've had this hood for uh, just over a year. The, the thing is that uh, it is... Um, 
it's just so cool, you know, it's just, it, it, it adds so much to the speed of the vehicle. Um, it's, without it, well, I can show you, uh, without it, I would get a lot more turbulence right, right in here. And it would still be faster than a conventional bicycle. Uh, but with this thing, like this, you know, if I'm going uphill and I'm going at a slower pace, I open this up. When I go downhill, I go like this. Zoom. And, um, wow. It's, it is uh, very, very, very fast. And Quite cool. And I'll start up and I'll go up the hill and turn around and come back. Okay. That was really cool. Well, the nice thing about this is you you uh, you generate a lot of heat when riding a bicycle, but with an open bicycle, you lose a lot of the heat. But in the winter time, you have even if it's very very cold, you have to dress lightly, or you will overheat. You, so this uh, you stay warm, you stay dry, and you know with these great lights and everything, it's it's a blast. It really is a blast. The nicest thing I think I've ever done for myself. Cool. Three, two, one. David, tell me about the police officer story. Well, there was uh, one time I'd stopped in the Oak Bluffs uh, Police Department and, you know, just wanting to ask them about something. And the officer there said, are you the guy with the green, uh, with the yellow thing? And I said, yes. And uh, he came out to check it out. And he said, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we know when you're out on the road. And I'm going, oh, yeah? How, how do you know that? He says, well, the phone starts ringing. I said, yeah? And he says, yeah. It's, and it has gotten to the point where I could just about pick up the phone, and all I would have to say is, it's a bicycle. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I'd be right most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, I've gotten calls from people or emails from people that I'm on the police scanner. And this was in, within the first... You know, um, six months to a year, you know, because it was new and not right. a lot of people had seen it. And, uh, and you know, reports of a high speed motorized uh, vehicle, high speed bright yellow small motorized vehicle. Spaceship. I could, I could barely <laughs> see it, and that was it. <laughs> you know, wow. and I almost hit it. And uh, somebody said, Did someone almost hit you? I said, No, no, it's a, uh, but it's. And they'd say no lights. Those are very These are bright, bright lights. lights. Yes. I'm going to get a shot of you okay. driving away with the lights. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of G's Place. David, thank you for being my Please guest. I truly so appreciate it. It was so interesting. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys again soon. Thank you.